So we just finished up the all-star race at North Wilkesboro where we debuted new tires, had a driver return to victory lane, and a post-race fight. Let's go over it all in this week's edition of Car on the Hauler. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel, I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also let me know your thoughts on this video, what did you think of the all-star race at North Wilkesboro Speedway? Plus give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Before we get started I would like to note I will be doing some Indianapolis 500 videos this week. And if you're interested in that, if you're interested in Kyle Larson and the Indianapolis 500, tune into those videos. I would appreciate it. I would also like to get this out there right now. I do apologize. The video went on a little bit longer than I had planned. I went real in depth when it came to the Stenhouse Rowdy fight. I hope you still enjoy the video even though it's around 20 minutes long. All right, let's get to this race. North Wilkesboro Speedway. This was a difficult week to say the least. Rain affected the whole entire North Wilkesboro Speedway week. You had the Cars Tour races, both races getting rained out earlier on in the week. You had the Truck Series race get stopped halfway through and finished up this morning on Sunday morning. You had the Pit Crew Challenge pushed back. You had the Heat Race just canceled. The Heat Races just got canceled. So rain heavily affected this whole entire weekend for NASCAR. So I was glad to see that North Wilkesboro did not get affected by weather today. They were able to get in a good all-star race without any hiccups. Let's start with the all-star open. It was a good event, hard racing. I think we saw the same thing last year. Even though last year's all-star race was honestly a snooze fest, the open last year was pretty exciting just because of how hard they were racing to get themselves into the all-star race. And we kind of saw the same thing today for the Open. Yeah, you saw some hard racing between Josh Berry and Alex Bowman trying to get that second position. Both of them ended up missing out on the show, unfortunately. Ty Gibbs and Bubba Wallace advanced. And they were pretty much 1-2 throughout most of the event. And one driver that just has an extremely strong fan base and continues to prove it is Noah Gregson. As Noah Gregson wins the fan vote getting himself into the all-star race i was really happy to see that big fan of noah and his comeback story he's had a great year a redemption arc one of the big talking points coming into this race was the option tire and just overall having new tires at the racetrack i think it was a great move by nascar to at least attempt this and i think for the most part the tires did the job that they were asked to do the tires really judged you on your driving style. If you drove a little hard at the beginning, you were going to fall off early. It rewarded the drivers that saved their tires early on in the run. So with the way the tires were, you saw a decent amount of passing. Maybe not as much passing as we would want. But there's other issues at hand other than just the tires. The tires did their part. The tires helped a lot when it came to the racing. If you, if you exclude Bristol... I would say this is the best short track race of the season. Starting on the pole for this event would later be your winner was Joey Logano. Joey Logano led a bunch of laps in this race. We're going to get into him in a second, but let's get into this lap two incident here. Well, first of all, on lap one, coming out of turn two, looks like Kyle Busch ran the car a little bit high, got up into the wall, and at the same time, Ricky Stenhouse is making it three wide on lap number one. Rowdy gets himself into the wall and then ends up coming down off of the wall, making contact with Stenhouse, damaging his car even more. Then Kyle Busch gets all over Stenhouse's bumper in three and four and then gets even more into his bumper the next time around, ends up spinning him around and wrecking him into the outside wall. I'm not sure if that was Kyle Busch's intent to necessarily wreck him, but he was definitely, he was really unhappy with the way he raced or from his vision, the way he thought he was raced. I'm a huge Kyle Busch fan. I was all for him being rowdy, and I'm I'm not discounting that. I like it when he's rowdy, rowdy being rowdy. We haven't seen that in quite a while, that version of Kyle Busch. I feel like that version of Kyle Busch has been gone for quite a while, 
and when he races and has those sort of actions and either his driving or his post-race antics he seems to just race better so it was nice to see that rowdy attitude even though in my opinion that wasn't ricky stenhouse's fault that was kyle bush's fault well then after that after stenhouse got junked by kyle bush he decided to park his car in kyle bush's pit box later in an interview he said he did that because he thought it was something that kyle would do and he, he's kind of done stuff like that before Another thing from that Ricky Stenhouse interview that they gave him not too long after the incident, I learned that there was no tunnel to get to the infield. There was no bridge to get out of the infield. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had to wait there in the infield throughout the whole entire event. And Stenhouse said he was going to be waiting for Kyle Busch for after the race, and he definitely was. We're going to get to more of that fight that we had post-race at the end of the video. But I want it now! But once we got back racing, it just looked like Joey Logano was a force to be reckoned with all night. He was so strong. He was so fast. It didn't seem like anybody could quite challenge him for the win, or let alone the race lead. At the very front of the field throughout most of the race, it kept very calm. Not very many passes, not very many things going on at the front of the field. But throughout the field, you saw a bunch of passing. You saw a bunch of drivers beginning to fall off and actually get lapped pretty early on in the event. One driver that I was really taking notice of was Kyle Larson. He was moving through the field really quickly, and I am amazed it took me this long in this video to mention Kyle Larson because he had a heck of a day. Of course, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about some of this stuff in my Indianapolis 500 video, which I hope to have out tomorrow night. But Larson ended up qualifying fifth for the Indianapolis 500 on row number two, showing really impressive speeds. I can't I can't even explain how impressed I am. He continuously impresses me more and more. I knew he was going to be pretty quick today, but I definitely didn't expect him to challenge for the pole. And if it wasn't because of Penske, he very well could have gotten the pole. It would have been between him and Rossi. But they ended up delaying the start of the race by a couple of minutes because they weren't sure when exactly Kyle Larson would arrive at the racetrack. So they were trying to give him a little bit more time to get ready for the race. But it felt like a big moment in our sport today watching Kyle Larson fly in and fly in on the helicopter and then land and get off it. They were just following him around kind of like TMZ. It felt like a really big, important moment in the sport, in the sport that we will remember for a long time. But back to Larson at North Wilkesboro. He had a good day today at North Wilkesboro. Had possibly, other than maybe Joey Logano, Maybe had the best car, was coming throughout the field most of the day. Actually made, a, in my opinion, a great strategy call late. And if you asked me three or four laps into that last run, if Kyle Larson was going to win the race, I would have guaranteed you he would have won the race. Because I think he jumped from maybe 13th to 4th or 5th in just a couple of laps. And the strategy I'm referencing, if y'all didn't catch it, at the end of the race, we had a strategy where the drivers that took off their tires at the beginning of the race because when we had that lap two incident between Stenhouse and Kyle Busch of course we had a caution and drivers that had the option tires on because you had to start the race with the option tires on elected to take those option tires off and save them for later on in the event and most of these drivers that came down pit road during this time on this last stop decided to put on those scuffs essentially that raced one lap on the racetrack. So at the beginning of the run, it looked like it was really paying off for Larson. He kind of just stalled around third. He ended up losing third to Chris Buescher, I think, later on in the run. Chris Buescher had a really fast car. He was one of the drivers making a lot of passes tonight at the All-Star Race. Overall, a very entertaining race. When it comes to short tracks, it's still not comparable to short tracks we had a couple years ago. But the tires definitely helped. But it's not the golden fix as some people made it out to be. Including myself, I was thinking at points this could be a golden fix, mainly because of Bristol. And Bristol was a big event, but there was multiple factors working into that race and why we had the tire wear or tire fall off that we did in that event. The shifting is definitely a huge problem because I think that's why we saw so many people diamonding the corners. They would just run it up real high and they would shift down and just cut down right to the bottom of the racetrack. 
I do feel like this race is going to be really split on how people think about it. I think there's going to be a big crowd of people that dislike that race. And those are mainly people that have watched NASCAR their whole lives and they know how short tracks used to be. And we still haven't gotten to the point where they used to be with how racy it was in the early 2000s. And then there's some people that are really going to enjoy this race, mainly because of the short track package we've been getting as of late. Like I mentioned, the tires definitely helped with the racing. Didn't make it perfect, but it definitely helped. So a race like this is a breath of fresh air for a lot of people. And there was a fight at the end of the race, and that tends to skew a lot of people's vision when it comes to an event. It's the same thing if Chase Elliott or Denny Hamlin wins the race. If it's the same race, there's going to be a lot more people that like it compared to disliking it if Elliott wins. But it's the other way around if Hamlin wins. And that's just, that is how it is. All right, before we go in depth when it comes to this Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fight, I have to go back to the open really quickly just to mention something. Justin Haley, he is a fantastic race car driver. I think I've always known that Justin Haley is a good driver. He's always proven me that he's a pretty good, above average race car driver. And to me, he's proven that he's even more than that this season. I remember a lot of people last season were questioning his decision about going from colleague to Rick Ware Racing. Rick Ware Racing has been a struggling team in the Cup Series, but year after year, you've seen Rick Ware Racing making slight improvements on the race team every year. But I think since Haley has joined, those improvements have been kicked into hyperdrive. Justin Haley has turned that car from a top 35, top 30 some weeks car to a top 25 car almost every week. Top 20 car on some weeks. Then last week got ninth. And this week potentially had the third or fourth best car in the open. I think he ended up getting fourth but made a lot of passes through that event, looked really strong in the number 51, and if qualifying didn't get cut short, he would have possibly started on the outside of the front row next to Austin Dillon. Just to see him doing as well as he is, and then colleagues struggling as much as they are, anybody that's gotten in the 16 hasn't really done that well unless they're at a road course, and then the number 31 of Daniel Hemrick has been pretty much absent if you exclude that call he had a couple of weeks ago that got him some track position it's just been a really tough year for colleague and justin haley is doing a phenomenal job at his new home of rick ware racing and if rfk decide to get a third charter they better put justin haley in that car all right before we say goodbye let's get into that fight because this was a classic nascar fight right here like i mentioned i love that rowdy's being rowdy even if stenhouse maybe didn't deserve to get wrecked like that but Kyle Busch gets out of his race car and starts walking towards his hauler post-race. And of course, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is waiting right in front of his hauler, just like he said he would in his interview. And this immediately turned into a very heated exchange as ne neither one of them were agreeing with the other one. Kyle Busch was not agreeing with what Stenhouse was saying on the incident. And Stenhouse was saying his side of the story. And I would have to listen more closely, but I'm pretty sure Kyle Busch said something along the lines of, oh, I didn't see it like that, or I didn't see that. And then Ricky Stenhouse responds with, oh, see this, or something like that, and just right in, right in the kisser. Pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> Right in the kitchen. Kyle Bush and Stenhouse immediately grab onto each other and try to start to fight. He immediately gets broken up. And one of the people that breaks up the fight and actually kind of gets to do a fight himself with Kyle Bush, that is Ricky Stenhouse Sr. Yeah, you see the anger on Kyle Bush's face, and he's right there with Ricky Stenhouse Sr. And they were grabbing onto each other. This is a crazy moment for the sport. I would not be surprised. If Stenhouse Sr. gets banned for the rest of the season. There it is. I'll get my own damn uniform back out and take care of this. He ain't going to kill my boy. NASCAR does not like it when non-drivers, especially non-crew members, get a hand on race car drivers. That is a big no-no for NASCAR no matter what the circumstances. So I expect him to be banned or at least suspended in some sort of way. 
Luckily, it looked like there was a couple of Kyle Busch crew members plus one of the Ricky Stenhouse Jr. crew members that were trying to break up this fight. You see one Stenhouse crew member at the end of the fight just trying to keep the fight going while these people are trying to end the fight. Me personally, I really enjoy when there's fighting in the sport from time to time. It really shows passion, but at the same time, I don't really like it when it becomes a full blown out brawl because that's how people get seriously hurt. And I don't want crew members breaking bones. I definitely don't want any race car drivers breaking bones either. After the incident, Fox was able to get an interview with Stenhouse. Stenhouse sounded very unhappy still, but it also sounded like he wasn't going to take this to the racetrack unless Kyle Busch wanted to. While Kyle Busch turned down the interview after the race, I think he had a quick word with Bob Pockris. And he pretty much said, I'm just tired of being pushed around. And that's really all he said to Bob. And how about Bob being in the middle of this fight? I I love Bob Pockris. I've talked about Bob Pockris a couple of times on this channel. I consider him almost an idol of mine. He's he's just an awesome dude. And he's right in the middle of this fight. <laughs> it's oh, His video is probably the best view of the fight. Just when the camera turns around and you see Bob's face, he's just like... <laughs> oh, I, I don't know who posted that that Mr. Krabs meme on Twitter, comparing it to that, that's great. But my final thoughts on the all-star race at North Wilkesboro Speedway, it was a really good race. I was very happy with the product we had on track. We had a good amount of passing, maybe not as much as I would like at a short track, but compared to recent history, I thought it was really good. I was mainly impressed today with three people, Joey Logano getting back to victory lane. He hasn't won in 44 races when it comes to points races so this won't end that winless streak but he hasn't won a race in general since last spring at atlanta so it's good for him to get back to victory lane and he's had a really tough season probably the worst season since his rookie year for joey logano i already talked about justin haley justin haley i was really impressed with him today and i've been impressed with him all season the last couple of months he's garnering a lot of new fans He's just an overall great guy, a great person for the sport, and a great race car driver if he gets the perfect opportunity, which could potentially be with Rick Ware if they keep on gaining momentum like they are, or if RFK decided to get that third charter, call it my boy Justin Haley. Hail yes. And then the driver I'm most impressed by, which I think it's everybody across the board is saying the same thing. Kyle Larson, so impressed with what he's been doing at Indianapolis Motor Speedway this week for the Indy 500, and then to come straight from qualifying. He was just going over 240 miles an hour in Indiana, and then two hours later, putzing around a short track that he's never even driven on before. He's never driven on this repave before. Kevin Harvick had all the work in the five car this weekend. Larson hasn't driven a single lap on this North Wilkesboro repave until tonight. And guess what? He finished fourth fourth this week i'm going to be talking about larson a lot but that'll do it for this video let me know your thoughts what did you think of the north wilkesboro speedway all-star race what did you think of joey logano's performance what did you think of kyle larson's day in racing plus give me your thoughts on that fight between ricky stenhouse jr and kyle bush but that'll do it for me thanks for watching my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace